Hi, this is Bonnie Roskis from 3D Vinci. In this video, I'm going to show how do you sketch up for an important task in interior design, how to explore options for arranging furniture and accessories in a specific space. So we recently renovated our basement and here you can see it modeled in SketchUp. All of the dimensions are accurate and so are the materials and the colors. You can see all of the colors and materials that were used in this model when I open up the materials window and click the house icon. The flooring material, which you can see here, was imported as an image from the flooring company's website. And here's that material. And the same goes for the wood stain material, which you can find right here. For the Benjamin Moore paint colors, there's a website called EasyRGB.com that will give you RGB numbers for almost all commercially available paint colors. So I got numbers for the blue, the brandy cream, and the purple colors, and I plugged them into the Edit tab of the Materials window. So a word about the model itself. It's important that you separate related objects into groups or components so that when you start filling the room with furniture and accessory models, nothing will affect or stick to anything else. So the room itself is a group and this group contains the walls, floor, stairs, and these two columns. All of the things that are built in and won't change. So I'll hide this group for a second so you can see. These built-ins are a separate group and all of the bathroom fixtures are also their own group. So now I'll use the Edit Unhide menu to bring back the room. This area here is the part of the room that I want to fill. I want to add a couch, TV, rug, and beanbag chairs for the kids. We're just not sure yet how to arrange it all. Either the TV goes here and the couch goes back here, or the TV goes right here and the couch will go here next to this column. We ordered a couch that's 81 inches long and I imported a swatch of the couch fabric which I found online, like everything else, um, right here into the materials window. And the rug that we picked has this sort of fun looking square pattern. Here's the couch model that I'm going to use, open in its own SketchUp file. I got it from the 3D warehouse. It's just a generic model created actually many years ago by the SketchUp staff. It has no colors or materials, just basic straight lines doesn't look anything like the real couch that we chose, but it's close enough just for playing around. To set the size of this couch to match the one that's actually going in the basement, I'm using the tape measure tool to resize it. The length is supposed to be 81 inches. When I click these two points to define the length, I see that it measures 8 feet, or 96 inches. But as soon as this measurement is taken, I can type 81 and press Enter. I'm asked if I want to resize the model, so of course I click Yes. I don't need this model open anymore, it's all set, so I can just close and save it. Back in my basement model, I'm using File, Import to bring in this couch model. And I'm going to rotate it and slide it back into place. It's imported as a component, so I need to open it for editing. in order to change its material. So now I can find the color swatch that I imported before and I can apply it to the whole couch by pressing the shift key. And then I'll close the component. Now here in another model I have the TV and the cabinet that sits below it. I modeled this one myself. This cabinet is a piece we already have so I just measured it and took some digital photographs of the material. I can use the tape measure here just to make sure that the TV does measure 55 inches and we're good. So I can close this file as well. So back in the basement model again I'll use file import to bring in the TV and cabinet and again I will rotate it and move it back into place. For the rug, I don't have a ready-made model, 
but the one that I like that I found online measures 9 foot 6 by 7 foot 6 and I can just make that on the fly. So I'm going to go to the rectangle tool and start a rectangle and type in the dimensions 9 foot 6 comma 7 foot 6. I'm going to pull it up just a tiny amount so that the top of the rug will be slightly above the floor. I'll move the rug into place a little bit later. The rug material is already in my materials window, so I'll just find it and apply it. The dimensions of the pattern, though, are way too small, so I'll right-click on the top of the rug and choose Texture, Position, and I'm going to take this green pin and drag it outward until the pattern looks about right. When it looks okay, I'm going to right-click and choose Done. Now I'll use Select and a triple click to select the entire rug and I'll make the rug into a group. And I'll use the Move tool to slide the rug into place. The last thing we need to add to this room is the all-important beanbag chair. I found this model in the 3D warehouse, but I had to scale it way down to be the right size, and I had to remove its color so that it has the default color. That's going to make it easier for me to color it later. I'm going to import one of these bean bags into the basement, and I'm going to use the Move tool with the Control key pressed, or the Option key if you're a Mac user, to make a couple more copies of these. Notice that when I move these bean bags around, I'm not clicking move points on the objects themselves. I'm clicking move points along the ground. This keeps everything on the floor. Otherwise, the things you're moving around could fly up or down, which could be a little bit annoying to fix. Now I'm going to rotate these to have more of a random fun look. And I'm going to find some colors to paint them with. So this is room option one. I also want to try a different arrangement with all of these things, but I want both options available so that I can switch back and forth to help me make my decision about how to set up this room. The first step is to create two layers, one for each room option. So I'll go to Window, Layers to open the Layers window, and I'm going to use the plus icon to create the two new layers. So I'll call this one Option 1, I'll call this one Option 2. Now I'm going to select all of the furniture and accessories in this room, the bean bag, rugs, couch, TV, and I'm going to copy all of this into blank space. For the pieces that make up room option one, I'm going to select all of them again and use the right-click menu to open the Entity Info window. This is where you can place objects on a layer and all of these are going on the option one layer. Now when I go back to the Layers window and uncheck the visible box for option one, all of those pieces disappear from the room. Now I can create my arrangement for room option two. I'm going to place the TV along the wide wall this time. And the couch is going to go over here facing the TV next to the column. Now I'll bring back the rug and the bean bags. and figure out a different way to orient all these bean bags. Now I'll select all of these option two objects 
and use the Entity Info window to place these on the Option 2 layer. Now I can use the checkboxes in the Layers window to switch back and forth between the two options. But this requires a lot of on and off clicking, and just imagine how many clicks you'd need if you needed to check out three or four different design options. So I'll use Scenes to make this even easier. First, I'm going to make sure that only Option 1 is displayed. Now I'll open the Scenes window. There are a lot of display properties I can save here, such as hidden geometry, visible layers, shadows, etc. Most people use Scenes as a way to save specific camera views, which is controlled here by the Camera Location option. But if you uncheck Camera Location, you can save the view without locking it to a specific camera view. So with Camera Location unchecked, I'm clicking the plus icon to save this view as a scene, and I'm changing the default scene name to Option 1. Now I'm switching the visible layers so that Option 2 is the one that appears, and I'm saving a new scene, calling it Option 2. And now I can close all of the many windows that are cluttering up the display, and I can easily click Scene tabs up at the top of the SketchUp window to switch back and forth between Option 1 and Option 2. This technique, and many others like it, are found in my book, Modeling with SketchUp for Interior Design, available at Amazon or on the 3 Vinci website. Thanks for watching!